Hello and welcome to Rat Sabha TV. You're watching the big picture with your host Rajat Kane. In next half hour, we'll discuss challenges before the federal structure. Of late, we have seen instances of tussle between the agencies of central government and the state governments. The latest in the list happens to be IT raids at the offices and residence of aides of Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister, which saw a run-in between the CRPF officers and state police officers. Such instances were also witnessed in Kolkata earlier this year and other states as well. Whereas where the central agencies proceed with the corruption or irregularity probes, but had a run-in with the state governments. The central agencies are formed in a federal structure and have primarily the responsibility of probing issues against government staff and serious cases referred to it by the courts or by the state governments itself. The case in point happens to be famous case, Arushi, Nitari and other cases. Besides the cases of corruption probe, another subject which raises the issue of federal structure is statements by, made by the leaders of Jammu and Kashmir centric political parties on Article 370. Now what are the challenges before smooth cohesion in the federal structure and what is an ambit of central and the state agencies? For more on this important discussion, we are joined by a guest in the studio, Mr. Abhilash Khandekar, senior journalist, Mr. J. Sain Deepak, advocate, Supreme Court, and Shekhar Iyer, senior journalist. Thank you all three of you for joining us. Mr. Deepak, I would like to start with you first, the legal point. What is the ambit of central agency when they proceed with raids or any proceeds of, of the probe? in other state, in the territorial jurisdiction of the state governments? See, the first thing is, uh, I don't think any of these issues, at least this particular issue, poses any challenge or highlights a problem with the federal structure at all. It's a plain and simple case of somebody treating the state as their own fiefdom. Mm -hmm. This is not a constitutional question at all, even remotely. The jurisdiction of central agencies when it comes to these issues is crystal clear. And any interference or use of state instrumentalities or state agencies to prevent them from doing their job is a violation of fundamental legal principles of, and creates a law and order issue. And it only means a defiance of the constitutional structure. It is not a challenge which is, which, or it's not a challenge, or it's not something that highlights a problem with the federal structure. Mm -hmm. It shows somebody's absolute indifference and apathy towards the constitutional schema as far as I am concerned. So, when the central agency starts a certain probe or proceeds on a certain probe, obviously its jurisdiction on that particular issue, they would have verified it and then they would have started it. Now, the agency's jurisdiction or its ability to do its job is not restricted by the meets and bounds of the geographical uh, territories of a particular state. If the jurisdiction ventures into any state, right. regardless of which state it may be, whichever dispensation, uh, dispensation may be in power, mm -hmm. the fact remains that as long as that particular subject matter falls within the scope of their jurisdiction, there ends the matter. Now, in fact, in such a situation, it behooves and it falls upon state agencies to cooperate with the central agencies when it comes to this. And central agencies or state agencies are answerable only to the law and nobody else, regardless of who is at the top. Right. Therefore, as far as I am concerned, this is not something that highlights a problem with the federal structure. This shows a, a willful, brazen flouting of the federal structure. Right. Mr. Khandikar, uh, do you also think that central agencies, whenever they act in the states in terms of probing, they are not obstructing anything. Rather, it's state government's responsibility that the agencies must cooperate with the central agencies. Ideally and legally speaking, the state agencies must cooperate. There is no, there are no two opinions about it. As far as this raids in Madhya Pradesh are concerned, because I hail from Madhya Pradesh and I was in Bhopal the other day, mm -hmm. the issue that came up was because when the IT raids were being conducted in Bhopal, the state police um, agency, that is the uh, state police in the sense, the DGP and the Home Secretary and others were not informed. And when the raids were conducted in a multi-storied building, there are a number of flats and one of the okay. flats the raid was being conducted by the IT authorities. The other residents complained that the main gate of the whole complex was locked up by CRPF and nobody was allowed to go in or go out of that whole thing. Okay. So they called up the police and the local police wanted to enter which the CRPF apparently did not allow and from there the altercation um, began. So basically, I think it was not about IT raids as such and nobody was um, opposing the IT raids which, uh, as, as you know, the IT 
the income tax and the CBDT, all this come under the government of India and not the state government. But uh, because Madhya Pradesh has a Congress government recently elected and the raids were conducted on the Chief Minister's uh, aides and um, his uh, OSD and others, um, the Congress apparently thought that this is some kind of political vendetta by the BJP government which is ruling the center and therefore some kind of twist was given to whole episode and it appeared to be a clash between the central agencies and uh, the Madhya Pradesh police and the other agencies. But that was not the case I think. Yeah, keeping the um, political partisan things aside, I mean, uh, this, uh, but, but you agree that central agencies have a uh, right to proceed with the 100%, investigation? hundred percent, because as you know, the, the, the issues or the, these things, the subjects have been clear cut um, and there is a divert, bifurcation between the state subjects uh, in the constitution list, in mm -hmm. the concurrent list, the right. state and the uh, central list. So there is no clash as such. But we have seen in the past that there have been um, attempts to, you know, take over by this thing in Kolkata, even in Delhi, yes. if you see. And when Delhi had a 15 year long Congress rule, there was not much of altercation between the 10 years when Manmohan Singh government was there in the uh, government of India. But uh, soon after that uh, dispensation changed, there was, uh, there appeared to be, uh, appeared to be fight between uh, everything between AAP government and Delhi. So right. there is some kind of a stress on this uh, center state relationship. Mm. But I don't think the federal structure as such is being dented at any point of time. Right. Mr. Ayer, uh, uh, what do you make out of it? Like we, we saw that very uh, public sort of uh, run-ins between the st officers of state government in Madhya Pradesh and the central government and also in Kolkata. There have been other instances well of late. Do you think there is a lack of cohesion? Because uh, I mean, we, the sense is that central agencies can proceed with investigation in any, any state jurisdiction. But is it binding on them to inform the state government, look, we are coming and please cooperate with us. Is, is, is this a, a plausible scenario? No, I don't think it is required for them unless, of course, it's a local situation which they can requisition a state force. But where they feel that uh, prior intimation could result in a leak out and the hmm. raid not, the raid not being right. successful, then they can go ahead. And besides, these are income tax laws. Now, give me an example. I will give you an example of what happened at the Kolkata airport the other day. Mm -hmm. A passenger arrives from Bangkok right. and is stopped by the customs because they suspect that the passenger is carrying some contraband gold, right. which was not declared. Right. And the customs are about to proceed with uh, the normal inquiry and filling up of the official procedures. Suddenly, the Kolkata police busts into the airport area, which is not under the jurisdiction, which is under CSF. Right. Then right. threatens these custom officers to leave that passenger. Yes. And somehow the passenger is forced to go out. Then a case is sought to be filed against the customs officers. Okay. Now the question arises, why do they suddenly get worked up, Kolkata police, about a passenger arriving from Bangkok? Similarly in Bhopal, income tax rates must be happening in several parts of Madhya Pradesh. Why this particular residence complaint? Is it because those who are who have been caught, they are not political candidates. Hmm. They are understood to have worked with the Chief Minister of Madhya Pradesh. Definitely, you know, when you discuss about federalism and cooperative federalism or centered relations, there is a political element to it. Okay. And Definitely. then these people, basically what are they saying? During elections, don't conduct raids if it involves major parties. Whereas election commission has, on the day they announced the results, they said that we have coordinated with IT officers, they will go around, we have kept observers, they will seize the money and every year it is being seized. Nobody was bothered when a bus in Tirchara Palli, which had 5 crores stacked up on the roof hmm. and belonging to a, a minister. And nobody had a problem because the, because the bus was checked like any routine checks. Nobody had a problem. Hmm. Nobody said why Tamil Nadu or you even come to very recent, this was little earlier. Take for instance when the Tamil Nadu chief secretary was raided and IT authorities deemed it fit to take CRPF there because they called the CRPF because the ADMK leaders and their goons arrived there to intimidate the IT officials. So therefore I think there is a lot of politics in this mm -hmm. because the way everybody is talking about I can see Sharad Pawar everybody is saying basically they are saying is you are doing something that has not been done before what is that? Hmm. That means if any independent is caught, some Namke was the candidate is caught, his car is caught with some money, it is okay. But don't come near us. 
Now they cannot take recourse to the you know the bogey of central state relation and this and that democracy in danger because this will not convince people. These can be good academic debates, mm. but the fact of the matter we know, or even what happened in Delhi. Everybody knows Delhi is not a full-fledged state, right. and everybody knows why it is not a full-fledged state. There have been several debates. The person who took oath as a chief minister knew it is not a full-fledged state. See when the, see you. Arvind Kejriwal is well within its rights to campaign for a full-fledged status of Delhi. Mm-hmm. Nobody has, but mm-hmm. so long as the arrangement exists, you cannot make a mockery of right. doing a gerov of the, the rules left and government's that, office. Huh? The rules are very much in place. Right. So there, therefore, I I am I am rather surprised sometimes this kind of events, which are definitely political in nature, and and suddenly they you know they re- open up debates on federalism powers. See, all that is there, but. On an issue of corruption, now what do you do when somebody who happens to be an aide of, uh, say, a chief minister, a former aide or unknown aide, and most of these political leaders don't have any people having formal designations? Right. Now their house is raided. Twenty crores is found, and they have electoral bonds which should have been either with the political party office or deposited in the bank. It is with them. What should IT do? See, and there is an attempt also I find to intimidate the uh, these law enforcement officials. Okay. Be careful! We are coming back. I think this is these are the dangers because everybody knows whose power is what, what is the extent, what is the jurisdiction, what is the everybody knows about it. Mm. I think none of the politicians involved do not know what it is. Mm. But and and I I was I was shocked by the Kolkata incident. Right, right, right. I, I know uh, it's a uh, sign. It's as as both the panelists say that it's a political. But let's try and keep. A little academic with you in on the legal point of view. Uh, now I would like to learn from you. Like, what are the bars on the central agencies in terms of the proceeds in the center? Well, in, in the state government's jurisdiction. Like, does DSP Section Six prohibits the agencies? I'm talking of the CBI here from investigating cases outside Delhi or any other union territory without the permission of the requisite state government. No. See, here's the point. When it is understood or when it becomes absolutely clear that the ramification of a certain issue goes beyond a particular state hmm. by default or at least as a part of practice such matters end up before the central bureau of investigation hmm. in fact in quite a few instances if the investigation starts in a state government or within the territory of a particular state and then they realize this goes much beyond a particular state and it could have nationwide ramifications then such a matter is referred to the cbi or right. if it otherwise has an implication of national importance then it it is referred to the cbi now once that particular jurisdiction is established and let's say they decide to take action they decide to uh, take it further assuming for a moment that you believe that this is indeed a violation of some kind of a procedure or a rule that exists mm-hmm. then you should question the legality of the transfer of that in- investigation in the first place however if you have a problem only with the investigation or the timing of the particular investigation that does not immediately translate to a questionability of the investigation or the uh, jurisdiction of the particular organization in the first place mm-hmm. most importantly as uh, one of the panelists rightly pointed out this is a case that relates to in, uh, income tax right it's nobody's case that this belongs to a state agency right okay i don't know the specific facts of the case therefore i'm not in a position to comment on who is right and who is wrong mm-hmm. i'm simply proceeding on an academic legal solid basis right. which is if there is a specific subject matter that falls exclusively within the jurisdiction of a central agency then it is up to that agency to decide what is the best manner to preserve the integrity of that particular investigation and whether it needs to liaise with the state officials or not if it believes that doing so will perhaps compromise that particular investigation then it is well within it in its rights to keep it completely silent now if that translates to raising the bogey of federal structure or a challenge to federal structure then it 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 appears to me that every constitutional scheme is now being used as a facade to hide behind so that the actual issue is scuttled and brushed under the carpet this i don't mm-hmm. think was the purpose of any of these uh, let's say basic structures put in place right so unfortunately when you discuss a constitutional issue to limit it to the four corners of academic debates would perhaps be uh, i would say impractical and it would not be meaningful as well unfortunately or fortunately this is inevitably linked to a political angle 
I am not raising fingers at anyone at this point of time. I am simply saying that you cannot forget the political element. That also means somebody could say that the very initiation of the investigation could also be political. Maybe so. But at this point of time, the question that you have to ask is this. So long as the ball has been set rolling within the four corners of the law, of the law and the subject matter falls exclusively within the union list under the seventh schedule of the constitution, then there is no question of their ability to pursue that matter and take it to its logical conclusion, whatever it may be. Right. And if you come in the way of the investigation and you start raising other bogies, I'm sure the people who are watching are not necessarily dumb. Even mm -hmm. they know what's going on. Yeah. Right. And this argument has been raised even before that before the elections don't do anything which is peculiar. I don't understand. The sanctity of elections is understood. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean that every other process must necessarily be in animated suspension or suspension animated. It doesn't make sense at all as far as I'm concerned. They have to do their jobs. Mm. Should law and order take the back seat merely because election is going on or should corruption cases take a back seat merely because the election has started or is about to start? I don't understand. We, st we start talking about election when a movie is released. We start talking about election when there is an IT raid. What are we going to correct with respect to an election? Has this practice been observed in the last 60, 70 years where they say that the moment there is an announcement of an election, everything must come to a standstill? Mm. Should people stop breathing altogether? <laughs> I think this is taking it to an extremely ridiculous limit. These institutions must be allowed to do their job. At the end of the day, if you're right, if you're innocent, the facts will speak for themselves and the law will take its own course. That seems to be the much cliched line that is used. So put faith in that particular line and dialogue. Right. Mr. Khantikar, does tussles like this between the central agencies and the state agencies, it leaves a scar for the federal structure? And by federal structure, I mean for both the center and the state. It's not just primacy to a state or a center, but each other, the concept of having each other, the cohesive functioning machinery of center and state, does it leave scar in that? It does at times. I will, I will take you a few years back when the then Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister Shivara Singh Chauhan actually sat on a dharna, a sit-in, against the government of India's policies. He demanded some kind of coal royalty and mm -hmm. I remember Jairam Ramesh was the environment minister. And uh, Shivra Singh Chauhan sitting on a um, dharna in the state capital of Madhya Pradesh against the, uh, you know, against the um, uh, union government. So that kind of uh, stress was also seen, politically speaking. These are, we are talking about agencies, but I am going beyond that. Yeah. So there have been such instances, and you refer to that CBI thing also. I remember in Madhya Pradesh, the CBI Act, I think our lawyer friend will be able to shed more light on that. But the Madhya Pradesh government had also promulgated some kind of executive order by which they said that the CBI cannot enter Madhya Pradesh jurisdiction, that is the geographical limits of Madhya Pradesh, because mm. this act pertains only to um, uh, Delhi's uh, jurisdiction and it was not uh, passed by the parliament or something of that sort had happened. And that is what happened later in the uh, West Bengal case also. Mm. But Madhya Pradesh had done it quietly uh, before that because they expected some kind of raids when the UPA government was in Delhi. So I think there have been number of instances in the past when the center state relations due to one reason or the other came in for some kind of stress and they did leave some kind of scars and uh, not very deep scars but you know <clears throat> about 20 years ago or maybe 30 years ago there were governments not may of many parties in different states but today right. that um, scenario has changed and uh, there are the government is in uh, BJP and there are many other state governments so they keep fighting about once they keep fighting about such central forces deployment or otherwise and such actions as uh, income tax rate or something here in Madhya Pradesh what happened that the central the income tax team not the sleuths not only uh, visit the uh, residence of the serving OSD of Mr. Kamal Nath, they also took with them CRPF um, uh, forces anticipating some kind of law and order situation okay. which they thought that the Madhya Pradesh police would have created problems for them. And the hmm. Madhya Pradesh police was not informed, the election commission was not informed and therefore the issue was, uh, you know, debated at length between the Congress and BJP, their trading charges. But fact remains, as he rightly put out, that the law is very clear about it. Hmm. There is no, no fight over law and therefore I think that whatever clashes between CRPF and Bhopal police took play out, that did not uh, flare up much. But definitely the political slug uh, fight is uh, going on. But Congress is saying BJP did the timing, the timing of the raid and all these things are being discussed nowadays. Right. <clears throat> Mr. Ayer, usually we see whenever there is a crisis in the state, state seeks help of the center. But whenever there are issues regarding the probe, then we see tussle between the state and the center. 
and it's it's not just state asking center or center asking state the instance has been from both the sides where do you see one needs to draw a line no actually it is not center and state it is the political personalities involved see for instance uh, income tax requisitioning central forces this is very much within the relevant rules it is not that they call somebody it is provided in the operational standard operating procedures of income tax that the officials that they can call for central forces because they may have to move in areas where there will be a problem mm -hmm. so that provision has already been incorporated and i think it was mentioned repeatedly during subsequent uh, you know incidents last year that they they are MPA. and then abhilash ji mentioned shivraj singh chauhan before shivraj chauhan uh, did that there was digvijay singh doing it here when vajpayee ji was prime minister see this this is there is a lot of politics in this and everybody knows every player knows this is politics like vajpayee ji knew what digvijay was doing was politics and digvijay knew what he was doing is politics hmm. because to show that they are the aggrieved ones and center is the all powerful and center is not kind to us now what happens is see nobody had a problem particularly in this government which no chief minister had a problem till i think uh, the elections came round the corner chandrababu naidu did not have a problem he said it is a most sympathetic center similarly none of the chief ministers during the last 4 years came here and said that this government has discriminated against them even kerala chief minister left left to run pinnayi vijayan said i had the most sympathetic hearing from prime minister modi even when the floods happened there there was no problem i think wherever there is a, there is no problem but where politics steps in and the feeling is look we are disadvantaged on a particular issue because the center is ruled by some other party and we are heading something else then the politics come to play otherwise i think by and large we have not seen a situation where the center and state have been at loggerheads states mm. have been loggerheads we have seen assam and nagaland fighting over the border issue this district belongs to us or that or there has been disputes over river sharing though they, they have been the issues where you know the institutions have been at loggerheads mm. or for instance kaveri you know the supreme court gave the award of tribunal it was challenged repeatedly by karnataka because it didn't want water to go to tamil nadu mm. so so mm. you know despite supreme court award you know it was challenged repeatedly and finally supreme court said look we have to finally settle this so institutional problems come when sharing of resources right or over the jurisdiction or where there is a difficulty over the border Correct. you know the, the border being properly demarcated or some village because there are villages in andhra which for them they get relief from orissa and there are villages that, that belong to orissa which get relief from andhra pradesh government these are some uh, dichotomies that exist because mm -hmm. of geographical uh, you know the reasons but by and large the center and state have managed of mm. course jammu and kashmir is a separate case right right that's a separate that's case that's different thing yes and and what you are hearing now the statements and yes. aversions on all sides is lot to do with elections there is it is it just pure politics or does it also in a long run poses some sort of a, a question mark or raises the issue on the federal structure I mean, it's a statement made by jammu kashmir politicians about article 370 and having two prime ministers and two chiefs See, prior to 1953, you know, Sheikh Abdullah had a problem, and then there was an agreement between him and Nehru, the famous uh, Nehru yep. Sheikh Abdullah Pact. Subsequent to that, the uh, National Conference was seen as a party that belongs to the mainstream. Hmm. Then we saw the, the the influence of National Conference, you know, gradually diminishing with the rise of forces like PDP. Now, after PDP had an agreement, I mean, had a, a alliance with BJP. today the race there is in the particularly the valley to somehow appease to the separatist sentiments by these national mainstream parties including the congress even today congress is forced to say all those things about afsa and all that hmm. you know though when they were in power at the center they didn't see any reason to revisit afsa right right so but so therefore it's more to do with elections and everybody knows even if you know the bjp's commitment to article 370 it is not a new thing it is a stand right from the beginning of jansak days it's not new and similarly now these people are talking of you know after all this issue of two flags and two constitution this is a one of the core philosophy which jansak opposed correct hmm. ek vidhan right. ek nishan ek this is bahut shuruaat se so, so these are these are issues that are there but definitely the main so called mainstream parties today feel that they cannot even more about campaigning if they do not somehow cater to pander to the, the separatist sentiments
which is which is very unfortunate because that leaves room for no other uh, player in between. If the mainstream parties also join the separate element, then what is left there? Right, right. Sainthipak, last word to you. Uh, if more and more such tussles become norm in the future between the central agencies and the state agencies, do we see more and more court intervention in a smallest or rather a very regular cases of say a corruption or for that matter probing a particular officer of a state department or a center department? The issue of federal structure and power sharing so to speak typically arises when you're looking at sharing of resources, mm. redrawing of borders, creation of new states or uh, let's say distribution of finances or let's say the portion that you're supposed to get from GST or taxes or so forth, this would perhaps be a legitimate issue. Where states do not expect to be constantly standing in front of the center with their arms outstretched for arms when it comes to their own resources and their own needs. To that extent, I think that issue would be legitimate. But the two issues which I think at this point of time going by the discussion and going by the issues that you've raised, which I don't think necessarily fall within center-state relations. One, a law and order issue is a law and order issue. It should not be given the color of a constitutional problem which has effectively created some kind of a fissiparous tendency between the relationship in the center and the state. That I think is sophistication at its worst when it comes to a simple issue. And therefore judicial intervention becomes important and mm. they are ending up facilitating the intervention of the judiciary when it comes to these things, perhaps rightly so. Two, when it comes to issues of national security, whether it is elections or whatever, if a politician especially ends up catering to the lowest common denominator and especially mm. within the separatist crowd or a successionist crowd, that is not to be seen only in the context of elections, that is effectively going to create a long-term scar when it comes to the integrity of this country and that cannot be overlooked or glossed over as a mere statement made in the election of the hustings of the election or made in the mm. heat of the elections. That is, uh, according to me, impermissible and unpardonable, regardless of who makes it. And if it happens to be a national mainstream party which panders to that kind of a sentiment merely because it sees some kind of a vote bank, mm. then if it effectively insults the electorate and also its mandate as a national party which is meant to keep the country together, regardless of whether it, uh, let's say, occupies the treasury benches or the opposition benches, that shouldn't make a difference. So the statements made in Kashmir with respect to Article 370, according to me, perhaps could end up creating situations where, again, Religious minorities in that particular state will find it difficult to survive. Therefore, the question of rehabilitation will again take a back seat. Right. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you for joining us and discussing this issue threadbare challenges for the federal structure and the onus lies in both the center and the state for a better cohesion. Thank you for watching Big Picture in Raj Sabha TV.